are we already at the end of September? How? 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 I feel like every month so far has just went by in the blink of an eye. And maybe I just haven't been paying attention. Maybe I've just been going and going and going. And I haven't even taken the time to realize we are almost at October, which means we're almost at Thanksgiving, which means we are almost at December, which means it's New Year's. It's time is just flying by. And once October gets here, that's like the end of 2022, because these next two, three months are going to go by so insanely fast. Do you guys want to know something like really funny? So about a couple weeks ago, I had an appointment, a really important appointment to go to. And come to find out, my car battery died. And I'm like, okay, oh, this is interesting. But in order for me to get to the place for them to give me a new battery, I'd have to jump my car. So uh, if you were like a young woman, we're not always taught how to jump, jumpstart your car. So here I am. I'm like, okay. So I call my dad and I don't actually like FaceTime him. We, uh, we communicate through Zoom. So I'm already trying to teach him how to uh, turn the sound on because I couldn't hear him too well. But he's figured it out. And I'm proud of him for that. He's figured it out. But I had to actually order jumper cables from the store. Went to Instacart and I ordered me some jumper cables from the nearest H-E-B. And they got it to me within an hour. And I was on the phone with my dad and I was looking at YouTube videos. And I said, all right, uh, I'm about to do this. And I felt like I was entering this sort of existential crisis mode because I'm really having to do something that I depend on my dad for. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like changing a tire. You'd want to know how to change a tire, but you never feel like you have to because somebody will always be there to do it for you. It was just one of those things. So I'm putting the jumper cables on and I'm like, okay, I'm hopefully I'm doing it right. And then I saw on, on this YouTube video that if you put the jumper cables in the wrong place, it'll spark. And this dude on the YouTube video is talking about, oh yeah, make sure it doesn't spark and cause a fire. And I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? So here I am again on the phone with my dad. And I'm like, you know, I, I'm not sure I could do this. <laughs> I'm not sure if I could really do this. I tried and I tried and something actually did spark. Okay. I had my mom's car, my car. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm panicking. I'm sweating. It was hot outside. I was so scared. So I told my dad, you know what? I'm going to have to try again tomorrow. And I did. And it ended up working. So moral of the story, give things a try. Give things a try. And if you want to take a break from trying, make sure that you go right back to trying pretty soon after that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm really excited to talk about patience in today's episode. That's the topic of today's episode, growing in patience. Uh, I feel like we all are always going to have room to grow, especially with patience. Patience in our careers, our friendships, relationships, whatever it is, there's always room for patience. And I feel that patience comes from a place of humility and being able to understand that not everyone is going to meet your expectations, that everyone is flawed and makes mistakes, and that you don't have to always react to life's difficulties, but rather you can turn it around and look at it in a completely different light. So that's going to be the tone of today's episode is about how can we react to life in a way where where we're not getting angry at every single inconvenience that we have so i'm faith pickney and this is everything grows the way society is set up now we are so privileged because we get to watch shows and watch it in its entirety thank you netflix for introducing binge watching I, I think they were uh they kind of introduced that whole aspect of watching television but we're so used to episodes being put out in bulks that when we actually watch uh regular tv uh we're having to actually wait every week for a new episode it's like it was in the olden days when you'd have to wait every single week for a new episode of that so raven and it kind of 
you know, I think back then it was easy to be patient because that's the way the world was. You had to wait for things to come out. Same thing with music. And now people just, they hack systems. And before you know it, before you know it, an album's been late. So we're a very impatient society. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. Does it irk me a bit knowing that I have to wait a week to see Abbott Elementary again? Yes, because that show is so good. But I get it. That's the way it is. We are very impatient now because everything is so accessible. Everything on the internet. We can look up anything we want on the internet within seconds and have like the whole encyclopedia at our disposal. So it just goes to show you that we are very privileged and we do take this sort of access for granted. So when I think of patience, I think of tolerance, endurance uh, for life's difficulties, for dealing with difficult people, (laughs) very hard people to work with. I've had instances in my life where I wasn't always the most patient person. And I think growing in patience means uh, growing within your character. It's improving your character. It's working on you as a person rather than uh, just tolerating people. I feel like you can tolerate somebody, but you would have to actively be putting the work in uh, to be patient with this person. Being patient comes from a place of understanding. And grace, being able to look at people and know that, you know what, this person is not going to meet my expectations. So why am I expecting them to live their life the way I'd want them to live their life or talk to me the way that uh, I'm expecting them to talk to me? Not everybody is going to live up to whatever expectations you have. But you can only hope that you can focus on how you respond or confrontations that we're we're approached with that we can respond in style. So I want to talk about some instances throughout my life where I wasn't always the most patient person. So I'd say that when I was a child, we'll start off with you know, our earlier years. So when I was a child, I was like really, really little. I think I would get impatient if my dad were to say, yeah, we're going to go to the store like Toys R Us and we're going to get you a new toy. Uh, You know, of course, I'd be really, really excited, but I'd probably bring it up so, so much where it probably got a little annoying that uh, I wasn't willing to wait. And here's the thing, when you're not willing to wait, for certain things to happen for yourself, you're actually going to sabotage the whole process. Self-sabotage is real and we all go through it. So me at like five, six years old, thinking that me asking my dad numerous times when we're going to Toys R Us, even though I knew we were going at the end of the week, it just ruins the whole experience. And uh, you take it for granted that you will soon be gifted something or wait for a certain certificate of some sort and not appreciate the process of waiting and the beauty that's within waiting. Those instances of me at like five, six, seven years old, uh, wondering why it's taking so long. Why don't I have my toys yet? Why, Why can't I be like this person? It was all for a reason. The struggles I would go through life with, those are really meant to help us grow in our patience. I think that trials are really something that help us become stronger and build endurance. Even if we don't see it that way in the moment, that's really its purpose. I was ready to get an iPhone. I think my mom was going to give me an iPhone for my 16th birthday. What was the iPhone out back then? Was it the iPhone 5, 5C, 4C? That was like one of the first iPhones I got. And it, I, I think I had a pink one. Yeah, I had a pink one. But I just remember uh, being very impatient with the thought of having my first iPhone. But I wanted to be like the cool kids, of course. Uh, but I would sort of bother my mom about when are we going to the phone store to get me my new cell phone? Like when, like when are we going to do that? And of course, it irritated her because she was like, girl, like it's the weekday. Like, what are you doing? You're not getting a phone today. And I would be like, please, can I just have it? And I had no reason to have it. It wouldn't stop me from getting my work done. It could have distracted me actually from getting my work done, but I'm not thinking like that. 
I ended up getting the phone, but it was just a reminder to my mom that I was not the most patient person. Okay, I think we all can relate to this, especially if you live in Texas. Driving in Texas can be hell. And if you're not used to driving in Texas, yeah, it's really not fun. And you can see how impatient Texas drivers are. I'm, I'm going to go a little bit more specific and say Houstonians. Houston drivers are some of the worst drivers ever. And I say that generally, and I say that from the bottom of my heart in the most honest way possible. These people don't know how to drive. They're very impatient. I kind of felt myself uh, becoming one of those people. And uh, I try not to ride people's bumper. I don't do that because I'm a very defensive driver and I make sure that I am a pretty appropriate distance in case there is some sort of incident on the freeway, even waiting for red lights. Sometimes I try to beat the red light and it just goes to show you that I'm never actually in the moment. Like I'd rather beat the moment than just enjoy it. I don't actually take the time to absorb what's happening because I'm just rushing. And that's what happens with people. They're in a rush to go nowhere. They're in a rush to go to the next light rather than just stop at this light. And it, do, it does cause accidents. Life doesn't always have to be in this whole rush. Like you have your whole life ahead of you and you have your whole day ahead of you. And I know there are only 24 hours in a day, but that one moment that you wait for the light can really like change your life. And I saw a video on TikTok about, it could have been about a year ago, but this girl was talking about how we've become so impatient in all aspects of our lives that we're not even taking the time to actually look around. We're, you know, kind of just focusing on our phones a lot, that it's uh, causing us to have these short attention spans. We're kind of waiting for people to get to the point of their stories, like boom, boom, boom. We're not really taking the time to absorb the information that we're being given. And I think that's so true. And I was like that. Shoot, I'm kind of still trying to overcome that part of me because it was something that I was conditioned with growing up with technology, all these innovations and things like that. They really do keep you from focusing on your priorities. And I wasn't prioritizing a lot of things. And I was like, no wonder I'm not getting anything done because I'm too busy looking at everybody else and trying to rush to live their lives when I should be focused on fixing mine. Y'all know I'm a church girl, so I, I got to pull the Bible out because if anything, the Bible will always speak facts when it comes to these things like patience. Oh yeah, absolutely. I will open up the Bible and look for verses around patience and just really break them down and really understand what God meant about these things. So James 1 verses 3 through 4 says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I want to break that verse down and sort of just uh, talk about my interpretation of it, just what my spirit feels when reading that. Um, verse 3 says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So basically it's saying whatever is testing your faith is producing patience. So think about whatever struggles you're going through right now or what you've been through in the past and thinking that you'd never be able to overcome it. And then all of a sudden you did, you overcame it, you moved on with life and you feel a lot stronger. Well, think of it when it comes to patience, think of it as, all right, you know, I'm going through something. I'm, I'm in this season where I feel as if I'm not moving forward. I'm not progressing. If anything, you are progressing, but you're sort of letting that impatience affect how you look at your progress. I think progress is progress no matter how it looks, and it's not linear. And when you're looking at life, from a glass half empty view, how will you ever be able to appreciate your growth at all? So, when, so verse three, like it says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, all those things you went through produce more patience in you and knowing that you will be able to get through whatever comes next. Verse four says, 
but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So when I think of that, I think of you being able to endure those tests and trials because you know that there is a bigger purpose overall for your life and in that, you know, there is nothing that you are lacking right now in this season of life that you are in. It can be very easy to be angry with life, that life isn't doing exactly what you thought it'd do for you like it's done for other people. But that's the thing. You can't look at the person to your right or to your left when it comes to your life. The journey that you were on is not the journey that other people are on. This is your journey alone. So that's what I think of when I think of this verse, you know, that the way God has set your life up, he is really preparing you to go through more trials and tribulations that may come up and knowing that you will be prepared to overcome those and let it not shake you, but really strengthen you. I want to talk for a bit about self-sabotage, how that occurs and uh, how that plays into patience. So I'm going to read how it occurs from a page on Google. Self-sabotage occurs when we destroy ourselves physically, mentally, or emotionally, or deliberately hinder our own success and well-being by undermining personal goals and values. Have there ever been times in your life where you were diminishing who you were and what you'd done, like our, like all the hard, hard work you'd done because maybe you weren't recognized for it, or maybe your family and wasn't praising you enough or encouraging you enough or really impressed with you, that can really lead to really a negative thoughts of yourself. And that can also lead to low self-esteem. And low self-esteem can lead to social anxiety and have you thinking that you are just not enough, that you really don't deserve these things because you are not worthy because things just aren't happening for you the way they're happening for, every, for everybody else. Uh, and like I said, that leads to comparison. And when you're impatient, you're constantly wondering why things aren't happening for you. And then you start comparing yourself to the next person and, the, and this person and this person and this person. And you're just undermining your personal goals and values to get ahead in life and feel somewhat better about yourself. But the thing is, there are many people in this world that have rushed things for themselves and ended up unhappy. They ended up unhappy because those things that they were waiting for weren't supposed to happen for them yet. Here's the way I'd like to think of life. Let's say, you know, a person's five years old and there's this gift that's in them. Um, and God wants that gift to kind of go through life with them until they're about 30. And then they're able to really see the success of this gift. Well, that's the way that I see life a bit. There are certain things that are meant for us and they're meant to grow with us. They're not meant to just be thrown at us one year and then, you know, boom, we're, we're successful. No, these are things that we have to grow with. Think of passion. You know, I, I had an episode about passion and I talked about how what's in you is in you. It's not something that you really search for. It's something that you keep practicing at. And so you figure out, oh, this actually speaks to my soul. So think of it like that. Patience is a passionate way of tolerating life. <laughs> These things grow with us. And when I think of life like that, it helps me have an easier time with certain things that I'm still waiting to happen for myself. Um, I'm only 24. So I could say I really just want to have a million dollars in a bank right now, or I wish I could have bought my home by now, things like that. But if I were to really want those things for myself now, like right now, of course, I'm not going to go out there and buy a million dollar home if I'm not in a position to, you know, have a million dollar home or pay for it. But I know that that passion and drive that I have can stick with me as I'm growing into this financially independent person. So when it comes to patience, when you are growing in patience, Everything that is meant for you is growing with you. It's it's really already with you. It's just a matter of you realizing that y'all got to grow together. <laughs> you, do you get what I'm saying? You have to grow with what's meant for you. You have to. Because if you don't, then it's almost like you're leaving it behind. 
and you you forcing certain things to happen for yourself right now that really aren't meant to happen for yourself right now, you're just leaving those gifts behind, leaving them stagnant and lost. Meanwhile, they're supposed to be growing with you. What you are doing right now, waiting for certain things, that's going to produce whatever it is that you are praying for, working towards. So growing in patience means that you are going to be much happier down the line knowing that you waited patiently for this thing, whatever it is that you are working towards, whatever award, whatever sort of... um project that you are waiting to be done with. There is beauty in wait in waiting for the final draft. You know, I think about um how these movies and shows are created and how they can't rush the process. Some of them shoot for three weeks, some shoot for three months, but they go through this whole process and they all grow together and before you know it, they're shooting the final scene. And they don't want it to end, of course. You know, I think they enjoyed getting to be on this journey together. But there's something about shooting that final scene and then seeing the final scene on television and watching the responses of the audience. I think that's such a remarkable feeling to have that your hard work, your diligence, your patience paid off because people were finally able to appreciate the full authentic final result of your vision. Isn't that amazing? So when you look at your life, please keep in mind the beauty of its final form. Whatever you are waiting on, think of your blessings in their final form and how they will pour down on you in due time. But really, Don't think that you are not being blessed right now. Don't think that good things cannot come out of this season of your life, no matter how long this season happens for. Don't think that it can't be a good season. There are many great things going on in your life right now. And that's why I really recommend writing down five things that you were grateful for every single morning. Because it will help put into perspective how great life can be. And it really requires us to get real with ourselves and start asking ourselves, like, what am I actually thinking right now? And what am I watching and consuming that's causing me to feel anxious about my future and feeling anxious about waiting? The anticipation (laughs) uh, for this new way of living this new chapter of life once you get to that chap that new chapter of life it's going to be the best feeling in the world and it's going to be worth it your patience will always be worth it and i genuinely hope that this episode was able to remind you that your patience will be what brings you through life get you across that finish line knowing that You put in all the work. You didn't give up. Even though you wanted to, you kept pushing and you kept waiting and appreciating the lessons that you learned along the way. And knowing that once you reach that finish line, everything that's grown with you wins too. Patience gives you the strength to get through life's difficulties in a calm way and knowing that these difficulties don't shake you like they don't determine how it'll end up for you later on down the line and I think that's so beautiful and patience is something that we're going to continue growing in every single day but it doesn't mean that we are far far away from the good The good is already around us. It's already here. It's just a matter of us seeing it and looking at it in a different light, looking at our situations 
in a different light. So please make sure that you are writing down five things that you are grateful for. And if you feel that you can't figure out what those five things are, it's okay to like repeatedly write down those same five things because it reminds you that there was good that has stuck with you all this time. And you ought to be so incredibly grateful for that. Hey everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to tune into this week's episode of Everything Grows. Make sure to follow Everything Grows on Instagram at Everything Grows Podcast to keep up with me, or you can follow me on my personal page at Faith P. Marie. I love you all. Always remember, everything grows in its own time. Mm-hmm.